Well, look who it is. How are you, Chatterbox? Gotten the hang of the whole teaching thing yet? That makes sense. You certainly strut around here like someone who belongs. You seem like one of those people who blends in. I could see you just about anywhere and think, Oh, that person's here. Makes sense. I wasn't paying you some sort of compliment. To me, it doesn't matter whether or not you believe in the goddess. You're here supporting the church and that makes you no different from the others. I can't stand that. No need to apologize. I just have a rocky history with the church is all. They betrayed me, or at any rate horribly mistreated me. So I'm not a huge fan, but keep that to yourself. When I was little, a lady locked me up and held me captive for a long time. The Knights of Saros rescued me, promised to protect me. But then they hid me away in abyss. So all the knights did was move me from one cage to another. Wouldn't you call that mistreatment? It was all for the greater good. They didn't want to put anyone important in danger. As for me, my life was expendable. That guy Alois was nice to me though. And he told me a bunch of hilarious jokes to cheer me up. Do they not have sarcasm where you come from? Keep up. Anyway, that's why I hate the church. Someday you'll hate them too. They only hired you because they needed a warm body to fill the post. When you're of no use to them, they'll get rid of you without a second thought. Sorry, that sounded more menacing than I intended. I'm just telling you how these people think. They have rules. Dogma. They want us all bound to their system so they can control us. I don't do well with that sort of stuff. That's why I ran away from home in the first place. Yeah, ran far, far away. But as far as I ran, it wasn't far enough. I got dragged back into society, chains and all. The kind of world I want doesn't exist. I'm getting too dark for you, aren't I? Forget I said anything. Your future seems bright, at least. You can just sit back and enjoy whatever comes your way. I'm just saying, don't rest your entire future on the church. It's not as steady a foundation as it seems. Anyway, that's all. I'll be going now. Oh, Chatterbox, it's you. Do you need this room for something? Should I leave? What do you mean? With me here, you won't be able to focus on whatever you're doing. All right, if you're sure. You're a strange one, you know that? When I came in earlier, people couldn't leave fast enough. They ran away like I was a bad smell. I should be used to that sort of thing by now, but... Well, it stung a little bit. Are you making fun of me? I'm sure you've heard the rumors just like everyone else. A girl who summons monsters when she sighs. That's not the kind of thing people keep to themselves. Anyway, I prefer solitude. It's easier that way. You really didn't know? Yeah, the rumors are true as heck. That's why the knights stuck me in abyss. If anything was going to happen, better down there than up here. That was the idea anyway. Oh, you had that look on your face. The yikes get this creep away from me look. It's okay, I'll leave. Look how dangerous I am, after all. You wouldn't want to be left alone with someone like me. Who knows? Maybe I'll get exasperated and without thinking I'll start to... <sighs> Sorry to scare you, Chatterbox. I don't usually do that. Guess I haven't been getting enough sleep. Everybody talking about me like I'm some freak? It's been bothering me. It doesn't matter. Gossip is petty and a waste of energy, so there's no need for me to pay it any mind. The funny thing is, all this drama has made me more likely to lose my cool. 
If that happens, you'll help me out, right? Oh, hey! I've been meaning to speak with you. I heard that you've been telling people not to worry so much about my condition. Is that a fact? No need to be coy. Thanks for doing that. But I do have one minor concern. You said that I haven't sighed in five years? What the heck is that about? Everyone's calling me Half Decade Happy now. First of all, terrible nickname. Second of all, you weren't even here. Did you just make that up? Seriously? You think that's okay? That's so frustrating. I'm fighting the urge to sigh right now. Well, the nickname's bogus. I have absolutely sighed in the last five years. I wouldn't believe what a hassle it was. Monsters rampaging willy-nilly through abyss. Thanks to some help from the people underground, no one got hurt. But it was a close call. Maybe if you had been there, it wouldn't have been so much trouble. Yes, you. You've got the Sword of the Creator. That thing can chop through monsters like nothing. Are you fishing for compliments now? Fine, you're a good leader. You watch out for all of us. Even when the rest of the world turns and hides from me, I know you've got my back. You make me feel safe. Like I can be myself. Like I don't have to worry so much about keeping my emotions in check. I felt pretty sad all that time you were gone. I could have left Garrick Mach altogether. But then I started thinking, you might still be alive after all. So I went looking for you. Back to where you'd fallen and all. Oh, forget I said anything. Look at me getting all mushy and sincere. How embarrassing. Let's just go back to earlier when I was giving you a hard time. Hey, I can feel embarrassed if I want to. I can feel however I want to feel. Whoa, did I really just say that? I think that's enough vulnerability for one day. I'll see you around. This is quite a place. Whatever you wanted to tell me must be pretty important. Okay, what's going on? You're making a weird face. It's freaking me out. You're going to be the new Archbishop, right? Let's talk about that. This is a chance to replace the old, hollow Church of Saros with something new. Something better. In your new position, you can make that happen. Then do it! Those hypocrites preached about love and decency while shoving folks like me into the shadows. That's a pretty shoddy religion in my book. You can reshape it into something that actually helps people. Not that I need any help, mind you. I can help myself just fine. Oh, there's another thing I meant to talk to you about. It's... um... um... Oh, you figured me out. I'm just nervous, okay? Say whatever you're going to say. I knew you were going to do that. I just knew it. Okay, let me tell you why this is a bad idea. You know that I'll always be coping with this condition. This curse. It'll always be a part of my life. I feel safe with you, but you'll never feel the same with me. I'm not the kind of person you should get a cat with. Unless you want your cat to be eaten by monsters. Have you thought about all that? I know you care about me. I care about you too. I wish we could spend our lives together. But it just wouldn't be right. I can't let you throw away your own happiness for my sake. Hold on. You're saying that you imbued this ring with magic? An enchantment that wards off monsters. So, it negates my curse? I'm free? Hey, 
Hang on. That means you weren't really proposing? Oh, here I am talking about getting a cat together. I almost wish a monster would appear just to save me from the embarrassment. Oh, come on. I can't handle all this will-we-won't-we we stuff. My heart's going to pop out of my chest. All right. Thank you for giving me a second to collect myself. Yes, you weirdo. Of course I'll marry you. Me too. Well, obviously I'm happy, but I'm also... You know what I mean. I appreciate everything you've done for me. You've changed my life in more ways than one. It's hard not to fall for someone like that. Though, of course, I've had a crush on you from the get-go. Oh, forget I said that. I'm all over the place. We don't know what the future has in store for us, but... For now, maybe we can forget all that and just enjoy being together. Good. After all, we've worked so hard to get here. Come closer, will you? Look who it is. How are you, Chatterbox? Gone the hang of the whole teaching thing yet? That makes sense. You certainly strut around here like someone who belongs. You seem like one of those people who blends in. I could see you just about anywhere and think, Oh, that person's here. Makes sense. I wasn't paying you some sort of compliment. To me, it doesn't matter whether or not you believe in the goddess. You're here supporting the church, and that makes you no different from the others. I can't stand that. No need to apologize. I just have a rocky history with the church is all. They betrayed me, or at any rate, horribly mistreated me. So I'm not a huge fan, but keep that to yourself. When I was little, a lady locked me up and held me captive for a long time. The Knights of Saros rescued me, promised to protect me. But then they hid me away in abyss. So all the knights did was move me from one cage to another. Wouldn't you call that a betrayal? It was all for the greater good. They didn't want to put anyone important in danger. As for me, my life was expendable. That guy Alois was nice to me though, and he told me a bunch of hilarious jokes to cheer me up. I was being sarcastic. Alois wouldn't know a good joke if it landed in his mustache. Anyway, that's why I hate the church. Someday you'll hate them too. They only hired you because they needed a warm body to fill the post. When you're of no use to them, they'll get rid of you without a second thought. Sorry, that sounded more menacing than I intended. I'm just telling you how these people think. They have rules, dogma. They want us all bound to their system so they can control us. I don't do well with that sort of stuff. That's why I ran away from home in the first place. Yeah, ran far, far away. But as far as I ran, it wasn't far enough. I got dragged back into society, chains and all. The kind of world I want doesn't exist. I'm getting too dark for you, aren't I? Forget I said anything. Your future seems bright at least. You can just sit back and enjoy whatever comes your way. I'm just saying, don't rest your entire future on the church. It's not as steady a foundation as it seems. Anyway, that's all. I'll be going now. Oh, Chatterbox, it's you. Do you need this room for something? Should I leave? Are you sure? With me here, you won't be able to focus on whatever you're doing. Alright, if you're sure. You're a strange one, you know that? When I came in earlier, people couldn't leave fast enough. They ran away like I was a bad smell. I should be used to that sort of thing by now, but... Well, it stung a little bit. 
I almost don't blame them. Everyone must have heard the rumors by now. A girl who summons monsters when she sighs. That's not the kind of thing people keep to themselves. Anyway, I prefer solitude. It's easier that way. You really didn't know? Yeah, the rumors are true as heck. That's why the knights stuck me in abyss. If anything was going to happen, better down there than up here. That was the idea anyway. Oh, you had that look on your face. The yikes get this creep away from me look. It's okay, I'll leave. Look how dangerous I am after all. You wouldn't want to be left alone with someone like me. Who knows? Maybe I'll get exasperated and without thinking I'll start to... <sighs> Sorry to scare you, Chatterbox. I don't usually do that. Guess I haven't been getting enough sleep. Everybody talking about me like I'm some freak? It's been bothering me. It doesn't matter. Gossip is petty and a waste of energy, so there's no need for me to pay it any mind. The funny thing is, all this drama has made me more likely to lose my cool. If that happens, you'll help me out, right? Oh, hey! I've been meaning to speak with you. I heard that you've been telling people not to worry so much about my condition. Is that a fact? No need to be coy. Thanks for doing that. But I do have one minor concern. You said that I haven't sighed in five years? What the heck is that about? Everyone's calling me Half Decade Happy now. First of all, terrible nickname. Second of all, you weren't even here. Did you just make that up? You asked around? That's such a weird thing to do. I'm fighting the urge to sigh right now. Well, the nickname's bogus. I have absolutely sighed in the last five years. I wouldn't believe what a hassle it was. Monsters rampaging willy-nilly through abyss. Thanks to some help from the people underground, no one got hurt. But it was a close call. Maybe if you had been there, it wouldn't have been so much trouble. Yes, you. You've got the sword of the creator. That thing can chop through monsters like nothing. Are you fishing for compliments now? Fine, you're a good leader. You watch out for all of us. Even when the rest of the world turns and hides from me, I know you've got my back. You make me feel safe. Like I can be myself. Like I don't have to worry so much about keeping my emotions in check. I felt pretty sad all that time you were gone. I could have left Garrick Mach altogether. But then I started thinking, you might still be alive after all. So I went looking for you. Back to where you'd fallen and all. Oh, forget I said anything. Look at me getting all mushy and sincere. How embarrassing. Let's just go back to earlier when I was giving you a hard time. Hey, I can feel embarrassed if I want to. I can feel however I want to feel. Whoa, did I really just say that? I think that's enough vulnerability for one day. I'll see you around. Hmm. Happy. You must know that it's rather uncomfortable to be the subject of such an unflinching gaze. You'll have to put up with it for a little while longer. I feel like I can almost remember... Apologies, but I'm not sure what you're referring to. Care to elaborate? I have this sense that we met somewhere, before we were students. But you're the Prince of Fargus, so how could I have met you? I do not recall meeting you previously either. Although... Long ago, I sometimes accompanied my father as he traveled the kingdom. Perhaps we crossed paths. Unlikely. 
I lived in an isolated village in the forest. We didn't have contact with outsiders. After I ran away, I was kidnapped. And my kidnapper kept me locked up all day and night. I think I'd remember if the royal family had stopped by for a visit. Kidnapped? What do you mean by that? A lady found me, a helpless runaway, and offered to take me in. She promised to keep me safe. Instead, I became her test subject. She experimented on me with all kinds of spells and rituals. I had a roof over my head and plenty to eat, but otherwise it was a pretty bad experience. Mm. This may be unwelcome from a stranger like myself, but I want you to know that it's perfectly acceptable to be angry about such unfortunate circumstances. I can't fathom why someone would cause you pain like that. I'm sorry you had to endure such a thing. You have every right to feel anything you need to feel toward the person responsible for your suffering. Oh, that's weird. Hmm, I wonder... What's the matter? Was it something I said? It's just that I've heard those words before. I think it was someone else who said them, but I can't remember who. Maybe I'll figure it out someday. In the meantime, see you around. Yes, of course. If our meeting again can help you in any way, you need only ask, and I'll be there. I did not expect to see you here, Happy. I get the feeling that you didn't come for training. Listen up, Didi. I remembered something. Remembered? Ah, does this have something to do with why you were staring at me earlier? Not ringing any bells. I stare at people all the time. Anyway, do you know Anselma? Anselma? Yes, of course. But how do you know that name? That is what my stepmother was called in the Empire. In the Kingdom, she was called Patricia. Oh, so that's what it was. I see now. What a relief. It was really sticking in my craw. Well, now that that's all settled, I'm off to bed. Just one moment. You may understand, but I most certainly do not. How did you know my stepmother? She used to visit all the time. I think she was friends with the lady who kidnapped me. Friends? Are you sure? I heard the lady helped bring her to the kingdom, but I don't really know the details. Anyway, when Anselma saw how I was being treated, she got angry, just like you. You remind me a lot of her, actually. Are we really that much alike? I'd say so. Come to think of it, you greet people in the same way, hold a book in the same way, you even get angry in the same way. It's uncanny. I share no blood with my stepmother, but to hear you say that, it pleases me greatly. She was the one who raised me. I suppose it makes sense that we would share certain mannerisms. To think that the person you mentioned was my stepmother is... baffling, to say the least. What do you mean? For all intents and purposes, my stepmother was completely cut off from the outside world. Suffice it to say, few knew that my father had taken a second wife. Sounds... complicated. I can keep my mouth shut if you like. I would very much appreciate your silence on the matter. But thank you, truly, for all that you said. Truth be told, the union between my father and stepmother has given rise to uh, much speculation. But for now, what's truly baffling me is the identity of that lady you mentioned. She welcomed my stepmother into the kingdom after she fled home due to political strife. <clears throat> no, I must stop this. It's time to put an end to this discussion. Baseless speculation will get me nowhere. Oh, come on. I finally felt like I understood, and then you go and say something cryptic like that. If I can't sleep tonight, I'm blaming you. Well, if that happens, come back here and I'll keep you company. I'll be training a while yet. I wonder... Could Happy's captor truly be her? Happy, I must speak with you. I've realized the woman who held you captive was Cornelia herself. Oh, yeah. Good on you for figuring it out. You're a little late, though, considering she's dead. How are you feeling about what she said, by the way? 
You seemed pretty upset at the time. It couldn't have been easy to hear all that stuff about your stepmother and the tragedy of Dusker. Whether Cornelia's words prove true or false, any lead is worth following. Hmm. This might not be related, but I remembered something else about your stepmother. She had a daughter. Her daughter was staying in the kingdom at one point, but Anselma couldn't see her. Her daughter? Neither my father nor I knew that the Imperial Princess was in Ferdiad at the time. Oh, that's not what I heard. I heard the king wanted to keep the child away from Anselma, so he hid the fact that their daughter was nearby. She believed that father hid it from her? What could he have gained from such a thing? No clue. Sorry, but I'm the wrong person to ask. As she was seeking asylum from the Empire in the Kingdom, Lord Arundel was obligated to hide the Imperial Princess's whereabouts. If her location had gone public, the Empire would have demanded her return. She would undoubtedly have become a political pawn in the Kingdom as well. The decision to hide her was not my father's. I did not realize until much later that the girl I'd met under such strange circumstances was my stepsister. So then, why did Anselma think it was all your father's doing? I can only speculate, but it seems there was a misunderstanding between her and my father. Although she was the Queen Consort, in truth, my father and stepmother were not even allowed the dignity of being alone together, and the one who persistently inserted herself between them was their intermediary, your captor. It was Cornelia herself. She hid it from Anselma. I believe so. Meanwhile, she may have hidden my stepmother's presence from Lord Arundel as well. If Cornelia caused my stepmother to miss out on seeing them, exhorted her, used her, and then also caused the tragedy... I'm surprised she pulled one over on both of them. She was pretty reckless. But in a way, it makes sense. She loved causing pain. That's why she used me and discarded me without a second thought. I fully agree. Countless people have been subjected to undue suffering as a result of her behavior. That is why I would like your help with something, if that's agreeable to you. You are my only hope. If you put it like that, I can't exactly say no, can I? I wish to learn all that you know about Cornelia. If I follow the traces she left behind, perhaps I can finally learn the truth of the tragedy. And perhaps I'll also be able to find a way to lift the curse she placed upon you. Oh, that would be nice. The people from the church couldn't figure out a solution, so I won't get my hopes up. That is perhaps for the best. That said, I am a stubborn man who is not often inclined to give up. I will not allow history to repeat itself, neither the tragedy, nor your own personal torments. If you're going to be so intense about this, I can't help but get my hopes up. But it's not always easy having me by your side. You always need to be on guard. You have my word. Should a thousand beasts raise their claws at me, I will happily send them running. Let's hope it doesn't come to that, Didi. <laughs> Though, it might be kind of fun watching you tear those monsters to shreds. Stupid rain! Go back to the stupid cloud you came from. I'm soaked. Ach what a pain. Happy? Yikes, you look like you just crawled out of a lake. Here, dry yourself off. And don't just stand there, you'll catch a cold. Come on, I'll make you some tea. Oh, um, okay. Huh. It's been ages since I had a nice cup of tea during a rainstorm. Pretty nice, eh? I don't drink tea very often. It is nice. But what does the rain have to do with anything? Doesn't rain make you want to read a book? Or rather, nap with a book on your lap. Though, I guess I'd like that no matter the weather. But then, if the book is too good, not only will I be unable to sleep, my tea would get cold. That makes brewing it a wasted effort. Ah, and that's why I don't drink tea when it rains. Right. Thanks for clearing that up. And thanks for the cup of tea. Well, I'm pretty much dry now. 
Gotta say, though, I'm kind of confused. Huh? About what? This just seems way out of character for you. You're so focused on yourself, you've barely ever spoken to me before now. No, oh, good point. The thing is, I'm not cut out for battle. If a fight breaks out, I'm only a liability. It's better for everyone if I keep my distance. What does fighting have to do with... Oh, I get it. You think I'm gonna sigh. You're just like the others. But if that's true, why are you acting so different? What do you mean? Use your words to make the things in your head make sense to the rest of us. Fine. Here's what's in my head. I don't understand why you're being nice to me. Look around us. Nobody else will even risk coming near me. They're probably afraid you'll sigh, since you looked pretty rough when we came in. Makes sense. Your sighs are disastrous. If I can prevent one with a nice, lazy cup of tea, it's the least I can do. I see. You did it for your own sake. Well, whatever your reasons, I'm surprised that you'd even consider doing this. For me. Surprised or not, it's no skin off my back. I'll keep doing what I do regardless of anyone's expectations. Think on that. I expected you to be a hazard, but you weren't. No harm, no foul, no need to sigh. If only it were that simple. <sighs> that was some good sleep. How nice it is to enjoy the sunrise all by my... Good, you're finally awake. Ah, who's that? Oh no, I'm falling. Oh no, I'm emoting! Calm. Wait, no! That hurt. You're telling me? Do you normally start your day by startling people out of trees? Not normally, no. Sorry, but I couldn't wait. Couldn't wait? It's so early. You must have stayed up all night. Huh, I suppose I did. How unusual. That's what happens when you get carried away with research. Then I remembered what we talked about, so I've been waiting here for you to wake up. Well, here I am, wide awake. How can I help you? I found an interesting document about St. Timotheus. There are some fascinating things down in that place you and your buddies call home. Timotheus? That's... The saint whose major crest you bear. His bloodline was believed to have died out a thousand years ago. It's theorized that your crest and the crest of Lamine have similar powers. Oh, Lamine was one of the ten elites. Here's the best part. Turns out this Timotheus guy had the power to summon beasts. I'm listening. Take a look at this passage. The writing's kind of antiquated, but at least it's legible. Saint Timotheus could converse fluently with birds and land-born beasts, and he considered these creatures his friends. He sometimes rode over hills atop an obliging deer, or called wolves to encircle him in battle. His sigh, inflected with the power of the Nightbringer's star, was immensely sonorous. Nice recitation. So, there you go. That's just how people from my village write. Is that... so? Huh. Anyway, this obviously reminded me of you and your situation. You clearly have this same astral power. It only manifests for you when you sigh. Does that mean you can fix it? Oh, goodness, no. Or I should say, it's unlikely. There's next to no documentation about this stuff. And I don't know nearly enough about the other crests either. And Timotheus... Again, nothing to go on. It's near impossible to unravel, so don't get your hopes up. <laughs> you know me. I'm good at keeping my expectations nice and low. Ugh, this path isn't the right way either. Why do epic quests always involve a lot of legwork? Well, Abyss is a big place. Maybe it's time to start on your next epic quest. Giving up and going home. People are dying up there after all. We don't have time for this sort of thing. What sort of thing? You? I'd say you're way more important than the pursuit of war. More interesting, too. Yeah, and the next big thing in Christology. How flattering. You gotta stop saying things like that or someone might get the wrong idea. Lucky for you, I'm used to your weirdness by now. 
I'm sorry my sincerity rubbed you the wrong way. I meant what I said, but that's fine. Now, back to your ability. I've discovered that this power can be attributed to your blood. The magic originates from your crest. There have been leaps and bounds in research on summoning magic focused on an arbitrary target. The only remaining problems are perception and distance, though it could be argued that... Blah, blah, big words, blah. I don't even get what you're saying. You don't have to understand it to appreciate its implications. Here's the connection. Once we understand your power, it's essential that we have a theoretical grasp on how to control it. All right, all right, I'll do my best. That isn't as scientific as what I had in mind. I'll probably need your help wrapping my head around the theoretical stuff. You up for that? No pressure. Well, people might die if you say no, so some pressure, I guess? Huh? Why me? Ugh, I guess it can't be helped. I suppose foisting this task on Professor Hanneman would be a waste of my precious efforts. This isn't what I had in mind, but I guess I'm the only man for the job, come to think of it. Sounds great. Hey, if you're tired, there's no shame in calling it a day and heading back to the surface. It's more walking than I expected. I've lost sleep over this. But you're way more important than a... Oh, right. You don't like me when I'm sincere. Well, let's get on with the adventure then. We'll check out that hidden passage next. We've got to find that book that Timotheus is said to have left behind. Come along. Fine. But what if we don't find the book, and you can't figure out a way to solve this? I've come this far. Now I've got to see it through to the end. How will I ever nap in peace otherwise? Sounds like we might be stuck together for a while. Thanks so much for the help. We should be able to manage on our own from here. I'm glad to be of use. If there's anything else you need, come find me anytime. Well, well. You seem to be pretty chummy with the knights. Chummy? I suppose. Really, I was just helping out with some equipment repairs. For an assignment or something? No. It just looked like they could use a hand, so I lent one. To me, it looked like they were using you for some unpaid labor. Unpaid labor? <laughs> I helped them because I wanted to, Happy. I wasn't expecting to be paid. It's like when you help us with our assignments. We don't pay you for that, do we? Like I have a choice. Can I give you some advice, Freckles? Don't support the Knights, the Church, any of them. All you'll get in return is a knife in the back. Isn't that a little... dramatic? You really don't need to worry about that with most people. You're naive. Those two-faced buffoons exasperate me so much I can hardly help but... Oh, uh, hey! That reminds me of a great story. You have to hear this one. It's called, um... Oh! The Luna Knight's Tale. Yeah, I, I think you'll love this. On second thought, maybe a story about a knight isn't what you want to hear right now. You know, the knights in stories aren't like the ones in real life. Unless the Luna Knight is a liar who does terrible things. No, of course not. The Luna Knight is the hero of the story. She's from an offshoot of House Blathed. Marries into House Regan after the Crescent Moon War. In peacetime, she sets aside her weapons and devotes herself to giving wise counsel to her husband. In this role, she ensures that the dishonest and unfaithful are dealt with accordingly. Huh. She sounds like a real hero. Very much so, yes. The tale is full of fascinating details about her. Ash, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you're not too busy, we could really use your help right now. Of course. Be right there. I'll tell you the rest of the tale later, okay, Happy? Um, sure, I guess. But seriously, watch yourself, okay? I don't want you to learn I'm right the hard way. See ya, Freckles. I can hardly wait to hear that riveting story of yours. Using me? I never thought about it that way. Happy, I've been looking everywhere for you. What's going on? Something urgent? Oh no, <laughs> but I promised to tell you the rest of the Luna Knight's tale, remember? Huh, I've forgotten all about that. If you really want to tell the story that badly, I guess just go ahead. Okay, I will. 
Do you remember where I left off? Hmm. Well, you were telling me something about how the Luna Knight was hard on liars and cheaters. Right. So her husband, Duke Regan, turns out to be a bit of a libertine. <laughs> That's hilarious. My favorite part was when she caught her husband in the act and tossed him out the window. I thought tales about knights were supposed to be straight-laced, but this one's raunchy as heck. I'm uh, glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> Usually these tales are pretty serious. But sometimes in a serious story, you need lighter moments like that to connect to the characters. It helps to see that even these great heroes made mistakes now and again. Just like us. You're so trusting, Freckles. For some reason, I find it endearing. But you shouldn't take something at face value just because it's written down. The truth is, knights do plenty of things that aren't heroic at all. Things that hurt people. You're not wrong. Some knights do terrible things. That doesn't make the great ones any less worthy of honor, though. What about knights who have died taking a stand against the church? Would you call them great? That's... complicated. Or what about the knights who put me in abyss, promising to release me from my curse? When they couldn't, they left me there out of fear for what I might do. Does that sound honorable to you? Happy... I'm so sorry. Uh, sorry. I can't help but say nasty things. Got any more stories for me? Maybe another racy one? Uh, yes, actually. I came prepared with the most... Uh, racy ones I could find. In case you happen to ask. Of course you did. Let's hear one then. This is why I keep telling people we need to keep her underground. It's a miracle that no one was hurt. Next time, we may not be so lucky. What makes you so certain this incident was caused by her sighing? It seems unfair to cast blame until you're truly sure. Isn't it obvious? A horde of monsters appeared out of nowhere and attacked us. Uh-oh. You guys are talking about me, aren't you? There you are. You won't get away with this crime. I'll make sure everyone knows who was to blame. Hey, you didn't answer my question. He doesn't care what we have to say. Forget about it. No, you told me you had nothing to do with this. I can't just leave it alone. Yes, you can. And you don't need to worry about it. But I do. What if they pressured you into confessing something you hadn't actually done? They mean well. But they seem to think they have good reasons to suspect you. Those suspicions could lead to forceful questioning. They'll do anything to get to the bottom of this. You're probably right. If he has his way, they'll do whatever they can to pin it on me. What about you? There isn't some part of you that agrees with that creep? No. I know you don't sigh unless you absolutely can't help it. You would never endanger people like that unless something pushed you over the edge. I know this wasn't your fault. You said as much, and I believe you. That's sweet. But unfortunately, your conviction isn't good for much on its own. We have no proof. Then we'll find proof. If you didn't cause it, then something else did. We just have to find out what. I'll investigate the site where we were attacked. There could be a monster nest nearby. You're so darn trusting, Freckles. For all you know, I could be lying. Your commitment to honesty is as strong as mine. You'd never turn your back on our common bond. <laughs> You're just like the Luna Knight. Hey, come on. I was being serious. Sorry, I'm not laughing at you, I promise. I guess part of me was hoping to meet one of those storybook heroes. Now I finally have. If that's how you feel, then I'm going to live up to it. I'll do my best to make sure you never sigh again. <sighs> this is boring. Mind if I sleep? You know I won't care. Night watch or not, it's still just for training purposes. Though. You'd likely get in trouble if someone sees you catching Z's. You wouldn't wake me if someone was here? Fine then, I won't sleep. Your call. You're being...
being so quiet, Yuri Bird. Say something. I don't always fill the void with my voice, you know. Sometimes it's pleasant to just enjoy the quiet and stargaze. No thanks. Stargazing is a waste of time. The stars don't even stay put all year. Those jerks. See that one? That star is home to the goddess. Yeah. Watching over us from afar. Hmm. That's called the Blue Sea Star. But it doesn't look blue. At all, really. Wait, no, hang on. Maybe it wasn't that one. But that big one over there, that's it. Isn't it? You don't know the first thing about stars, do you? No one ever taught you? Never, no. Well, the Blue Sea Star is really big. It stands out. Sometimes you can't see it at all. But other times, it's the brightest thing in the sky. Interesting. So then, which star was I pointing out just now? You might have to point it out again. Which constellation were you looking at? Let's see, uh... It looks a bit like a cat. No, no, that's not right. Maybe more like a fish? Or a... fishing rod? <laughs> what? I'm serious. See, those stars there are forming a shape that looks very much like a fishing rod. <laughs> okay, sorry. But that looks nothing like a fishing rod. Or a cat. I'm surprised you know so little about stars. I thought you knew everything. Who do you think I am? The goddess herself? There is plenty I don't know. But I'm always aiming to learn more. I'm uncomfortable not knowing things. So, come on then, Happy. Teach me about the stars. That'll be a pain for both of us. As painful as sitting here idling? It's not like you're going to sleep at this point. Clearly you know quite a bit about them. Teach me. Fine, fine. Look up there. To the north. Your other north. See that star? That's called the King's Right Hand. Let me get this straight. The stars aren't moving, but the ground we stand on is? Yep. We're on a big round thing that's always spinning. And that's why the stars seem to move through the sky. Hard to believe, isn't it? But it's true. I admit I'm having a difficult time wrapping my head around it. How is it you know these things anyway? If you were a noble, it would make sense that you'd have a formal education on all of this. In the village where I was born, there were people who studied the stars. They taught me. A village of stargazing folk, huh? Do tell. I've never heard of such a place. It's a very well-hidden village. It was a small settlement deep in the forest where no one ever bothered us. I was born there, grew up there, but when I got older, I felt like I needed to see the world. I couldn't live my whole life in one place, you know? So I struck out on my own. I always knew you were an odd little bird, but your birthplace makes you a rare little bird. Yeah, well, pretty soon after leaving her nest, this rare little bird was put in a cage. I thought it might be some kind of punishment for leaving the forest. What the hell? You think that because you wanted to live your life, you'd be punished? That's ridiculous. Look at this objectively. Was it punishment? Or was it just plain bad luck? There's nothing wrong with wanting to see the world and expand your horizons. Take me. Had I never left that gutter I call home, I'd have gone my whole life never learning how to look at the stars. Yeah. I left my village because I thought I'd find a better life beyond the forest. Now, I'm not so sure. Regret is pointless. What matters is how we live right here, right now. You know? Yeah. Do you ever want to return back home? I could say no, but I'd be lying. I've been feeling homesick lately. Nothing happened there, for better or worse. There wasn't much to be scared of. Everyone said the outside world was dangerous. That beyond the forest, all we'd find was an early grave. That wasn't exactly true, but my life was for sure easier when I lived there. I used to spend my days fishing, hunting for pretty flowers, running around for no reason. A rare occurrence indeed. What is? 
seeing you smile in that way. You're always so... I don't know... neutral? That's not true. I smile when there's something to smile about. It's strange, though. When I'm talking to you, I can't help but let my guard down. I don't like to discuss where I came from, but with you, I feel like I can open up. You know, I've been thinking a lot about my mom and dad lately. I wonder, are they even alive? So happy. Are you going back home or what? That came out of nowhere. Haven't you noticed there's a war going on? I can't leave now. Hmm, had a notice. Nope. Now that I have, will you head home once it's over? To check on your parents? No. Even after the war, I can't return. With my curse, I might destroy the whole village. I won't put them at risk like that. True. I want to say you could go there and everything would be dandy. The way things tend to shake out, though, it can be pretty hard not to sigh. What about you? You don't mind spending all this time away from... wherever you call home? Can't say I've spent much time thinking about it. Maybe after the war is over. I've got plenty to keep me occupied. If I drop things and head home, my people lose respect for me. I can't have that. I see. I know I should visit home at some point. It's been more than a decade since I left, though. They probably think I died. They might. All the more reason for you to go back. I know you're scared. But if you keep your visit brief, it'll work out fine. I don't know about yours, but my mother would want to know that I'm okay. I suppose I could stop by for a short visit. That might be nice. Still worried? I can accompany you. I'm sure you'll find some use for me. Huh? You know you'll be so caught up in my lively conversations, you'll have very little time for sighing. Hmm... That plan could backfire. I might find the conversation boring, and then... That would never happen. I wouldn't allow for it. And on the off chance a beast does appear... Well, that'll clear up your boredom pretty quickly, won't it? You've got a weird sense of humor, Yuri Bird. I like that. I guess I wouldn't feel so nervous about going home if you went with me. I might even have a good time. When you're there, you feel closer to the stars. They look so clear and bright. I'd love to show you. <laughs> I look forward to it. I bet we'll even see some of the stars you taught me about. And maybe I'll finally lay eyes on that constellation you told me about. A fishing rod, was it? scampered up to me, hopped in my lap, and scarfed it all down in one bite. <laughs> that sounds terrible. I was looking forward to that sandwich all morning, and then she scurried off like nothing happened. <sighs> ah. hmm. All right then, what do you feel like doing today? Why do you sigh like that? It's not a problem, is it? I could tell you were holding back a real monstrous sigh yourself. Figured I'd get one out for the both of us. Felt great. Oh, I see. Must be nice, sighing whenever you feel so inclined. Oh, why not try taking a deep breath whenever you feel a sigh coming on? Trick yourself out of it. I tried that once. It went okay at first, but then I had to exhale. Right. I guess they're too similar for that to work. Does that mean yawning is a no-go too? I'm pretty bored right now, so maybe we'll find out. But I don't yawn very often, to be honest. Because you sleep when the sun goes down and wake when it rises, yeah? Yep, that's been my routine for a while now. It's easier than contending with a full day of boring stuff. Come on, everything has its quirks. I don't think I'd call anything in this wild world boring. Really? Because you don't seem to take much interest in your own future. <laughs> That's not very nice, is it? We really aren't all that different, you know. I'd wager you haven't given too much thought to tomorrow either. Quiet. Don't pretend you can see through me. This pointless chatter has made me even hungrier than I already was. I'm off to the dining hall.
Just wanted the gal to relax for a change. <sighs> She's as prickly as ever. What's all this? Ha! <laughs> I knew it! Would you look at that? It's gold! Some poor sap just left it here for me to find. <laughs> I'll be taking this then. You think the whole world is your collection jar? Unbelievable. Ah! Um, sorry about that. Look, I feel awful. Please don't twist up your face like you're suppressing a disappointed sigh. How about I use this gold to buy you something nice? A sweet treat, perhaps? Yeah? I don't eat contraband sweets. Are you trying to get me locked up again? Give back the money or don't. It's none of my business. Either way, keep me out of it. As you wish, milady. Straight to the fun fund it goes. Drinks don't buy themselves, unfortunately. That might make for a fun night or two. But what about all the money you owe? If you're going to keep this, you should apply it to your debts before a bounty hunter gets a hold of you. This gold wouldn't even make a dent, it's jump change. Better to drink it than waste it. In any case, when I'm dead, I'm dead. When that happens, none of this will matter anymore. I'm not gonna worry about what I can't control. I've got better uses for this gold in the meantime. I don't understand how you can be so reckless. It's as though you want to get killed. Meanwhile, if I lose control for even a moment, Monsters will eat me for dinner. Hearing you say that so casually feels like a bad omen. It's unsettling, that's for sure. Sorry, is that too morbid for you? You just told me when I'm dead, I'm dead. And it's true. For me, not for you. And why is that? Because all of this mess I'm drowning in is my own fault. Every bit of it. You can't say the same. I'm in trouble because I borrowed, drank, and fought too much. All my own choices. That means it's on me to take responsibility and accept the inevitable outcome. So, since it's in my control to keep the size at bay, I don't get to relax ever? Uh, not quite. I'm saying that it isn't your fault, so you shouldn't have to bear that burden alone. That's a nice sentiment. But people are hardly lining up to share this burden with me. Talk is cheap. Everyone knows it's all over the instant I sigh. Huh. I have a habit of not saying the right thing to her. Not much I can do about- Hey! It's more gold! Go ahead and join your buddies in my pocket, pal! Why did you bring me here? It's so isolated. That would be the point. Yikes. See you around, B. Uh, hang on a second. Out here, in a place like this, you should be free to sigh, yeah? What do you mean by that? I just thought it would do you well to cut loose and sigh to your heart's content. Really? You found a nice quiet place where you could annoy me without putting bystanders at risk? Ah, why does this always happen? That's not what I meant. This is me doing something nice for you. You said before that you can't ever relax because you're worried about endangering others. A lot's been going on recently, so let her rip already. Sigh until you can sigh no more. That's nice of you. A chance to relax and sigh as I please. Sounds good. But what do we do about the monsters? What do you think? A monster shows up, I punch it in the nose. Done deal. By yourself? I'm never alone, pal. These two fists are always by my side. And they never let me down. Oh, right. It doesn't have to be here if you have performance anxiety, but anytime you accidentally call a monster, just holler and I'll punch it to next Tuesday. In fact, maybe it's best if you just stick by my side from now on. Do that and you're free to sigh whenever the urge strikes. Why would I have to stay by your side? Not a lot of people in this world can knock out a beast without breaking a sweat. I'm one of them. And since I'm always on the run from bounty hunters, I'm an exceptionally light sleeper. You expect me to sleep by your side too? Ooh, this may be my best idea yet! If I'm always with a monster summoner, fewer people will come after my bounty. <laughs> this is brilliant! Ah, <sighs> you 
never change, B. You're so predictable. <sighs> All right, have fun. Have fun? That's an odd thing to do. <laughs> Monsters, they're everywhere. <laughs> this is gonna be a blast. It's hard not to like that dummy. Hey, Coco, how are you? Happy! What in the world has gotten into you? You're to be jealous. You're flying more Happy, it would be easier to understand you if your mouth was less stuffed. Kindly finish what you are eating and then say your piece. My pleasure. Nothing better than fresh pastries. You sure you don't want one, Coco? It's not about whether I want a bun or not. It's about your atrocious manners. Walking around with your arms and jaws stuffed full of unwrapped pastries? There are crumbs all over your lips, your clothes. You've left a trail of them behind you. Unacceptable. Hey, I paid for them. I can eat them however I want. Sure you don't want a bite? If you don't have any, I'm just going to eat them all. You have to try them fresh out of the oven if you want the full effect. Pretty soon they'll get cold. Oh, I'll explain in noble speak so you understand. <clears throat> They have a crisp, oven-browned exterior and a sophisticated, spongy sweetness lying within. Uh, not... Not interested? That's fine. More for me. I was going to say, not so fast. Spare one for me, but only because you insisted. It would be rude of me to decline an offering made in good faith. One must mind one's manners. You're really dragging this out. Here, I'll make it easy for you. Open up. Wait, don't you... Not bad, right? I could not, in good conscience, acknowledge this as anything but delicious. Now you have crumbs all over you, too. Your form could use a little work. Next time, stuff the whole thing in your mouth at once. That's the proper way to eat a snack like this. If you ate this at some stuffy party, cutting it into sensible little bites, the experience would be ruined. I see your point. There are more types of dining in this world than I was ready to allow for. You've won me over. Let's eat them while we head to the cathedral and litter the ground with crumbs. A capital idea! Wait, no! Not the cathedral! You've lost me again, Happy! Thank you for going to such lengths to come see me happy. I live here, so it's not like I had to travel a long way. Do you need me for something, Coco? Need might be an exaggeration. Good, because I was just headed to bed. It's nearly sunset. Have a good night. Wait, no! Just because I don't need you for anything doesn't mean you may go. Need isn't quite it precisely. Hmm, how to broach the subject nicely. Nice rhyme. Are you dabbling in poetry now? Don't be daft. Anyway, I need you for something. You could have just said that from the start. So you want me to drink whatever this is? It's how I intend to show my gratitude for all the things you do for me. Right, right. Everything I do for you. Such as... What exactly? Oh, you know, the pastries, the dried meats, sharing your fruits. Oh, like when we ate those currants and you got juice all over your face. Must you bring that up every time? It took me hours to get the stains out of my favorite fan. I thought it was funny. So, what's this drink you gave me? It smells good, but it looks weird. <laughs> it's all the rage amongst the elite now. They call it coffee. It's derived from rare Dagden beans, which are roasted, ground, and then boiled over water. That's a lot of effort to make hot bean water. Nobles find such inventive ways to waste time. Hold your criticism until you've tasted it. And taste it quickly, please. This is a beverage that one must drink hot. All right, I guess. Well, 
Your verdict? Whoa. This is not what I expected. It kind of tastes like mud, but also it's delicious and I never want to stop drinking it. <laughs> exactly my reaction! The flavor is so striking that one trembles for more! <sighs> All gone. Got more? <laughs> Indeed I do not! The coffee bean, as I mentioned, is rare and thus expensive. They are not easy to procure. Though, if I could restore House Nouvelle to its former glory, I might have means to acquire more. On second thought, never mind. You don't have to go to all that trouble. Oh, but I was going to restore my house anyway. It just may be some time until my finances improve. How about we go to the woods and find some fruit trees like we did the other day? Fresh fruit might not be as fancy as coffee, but it's good enough for me. Come on. If that's all you desire, I think I can indulge you. To the orchards! <laughs> Delicious, is it not? There is little that can rival the taste of a freshly caught fish grilled to perfection over an open flame. I prefer mine with a pinch of salt. <laughs> Look at you, eating regular food like the rest of us regular folk. It's only temporary. A fish from the river is a coin saved at the marketplace. My project will require every bit of gold I can spare. Plus, there's a war going on. We've all got to save money however we can. Constance, what is that shabby meal you're eating with such lowly company? I suppose after all that's happened, she's given up on regaining her noble title. Probably for the best. How dare you! Would you two mind your own business? We're just trying to eat in peace. Did you hear that? It sounds like a stray cat is screeching at us. Oh dear, she's not using any silverware to speak of. She's just eating with her paws. I'd expect that from a commoner. But Constance seems to be doing the same thing. How humiliating. Oh, we're so vicious. Beating up on poor, pathetic Constance after all of her setbacks. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Pardon my outburst, but I couldn't help myself after your ridiculous conversation. How I eat my fish has nothing to do with my status. In fact, I shall vow one thing now. When House Nouvelle is restored, I shall bite into a whole fish thrice weekly. Pardon? Moreover, Happy is a dear friend. I won't permit you to call her a stray cat or anything so insulting. We shall continue to remain steadfast friends even after my title is restored. And how soon do you expect that to happen? We both know that if she carries on with such disgraceful behavior, she won't restore her house anytime soon. Well, for the upper class, those two seemed rather classless. Um, what just happened? Oh, I knew them of old. They were callow noblewomen from the School of Sorcery. No, I mean, you said that I'm a dear friend. Did you really mean that? Huh? Oh, one says all sorts of things when one feels like being cruel. But yes, I really meant that. Even when I am a noble once more, I expect you to keep me company well into my dotage. Of course, Coco. Won't be easy getting rid of me. <laughs> <laughs>